Good morning comic book fans, welcome back to Comics in 5 Minutes, I'm your ever-loving host Shorty and today I'm going to be reviewing, and this is the cover B for it, because it's amazing, Holy Roller. Yes, this is a fantastic cover for a comic book, it fits my sensibilities very very nicely, and it's kind of a bonus because I had no idea what it was looked like when I ordered it. I literally just ordered some of cover A and some of cover B, I didn't know much about this comic book, I literally ordered it because... It's Andy Samberg, um, and some of you may or may not know who Andy Samberg is. If you're not entirely sure, he's that guy off of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and uh, Lonely Island and uh, Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping, um, all of which are genuine works of art. Um, and I've been a fan of his for a while because of these uh, things he's been doing, going back to the Lonely Island stuff originally, uh, and I've followed his career and I've always enjoyed what he's done. Um, the fact that he's working with Rick Remender, who was responsible for some of my favourite comic books, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll absolutely check this out. And to say I was impressed by it is going, it's very much an understatement, let's say. Because this wasn't on my pull list. It wasn't one I was expecting to get into as much as I did, simply because I don't go for funny books. I said this repeatedly on this uh, channel. Every once in a while, a comedy comic book will come along which manages to impress me in other ways than just being funny on its own, which I don't think is enough for a comic book. And I decide to give it a bit more of a shot, but more often than not, I drift away from it eventually, because you, once you start with the intention to be funny maintaining it can become challenging or can become tiresome. This one, I think, is going to manage it because it is, well, it's written by genuinely, professionally funny people. Um, and it's also doing things to kind of subvert it, which is nice. Before we get fully into the writing, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the artwork. Um, I've got to remind myself the name of the artist, uh, Roland Boshi. I uh, apologize for mispronouncing that surname, sir. Um, who, when I first started flicking through, I got a very Archie Comics vibe from it. As in, it's going for kind of like... Not photorealistic, but realistic American vibe. There's some, like, caricature on characters here and there, but it's not going for big OTT superhero kind of stuff. Um, it's doing a really, really good understated job of just being a cool-looking comic book. Colouring is off the charts well. Not, like, all the way through. This time it knows it doesn't need to be too much. When it's two people having a conversation in a suburban kitchen, you don't need really deep, rich colours. It would feel kind of odd if it was there. But when we have a 1980s bowling alley with video game arcades going off, then, yeah, you do want that lush, over-the-top colouring. You want it to jump off the page. You want it to flash a little bit. And it, it does. It works really nicely. Add all that to the fact that when you get to the end, there is a genuinely compelling fight sequence where a bowling ball is bounced off the ground and into somebody's face. It's just like, yeah, brilliant. It's frenetic and it's full of motion and movement. And I really like that you can do that with still images. This guy's a good artist. Absolutely pay attention to what he does in the future. I certainly will be doing after this. But this comic lives or dies on its script. It, basically, it has to be funny because it's the concept is a superhero or at least a vigilante who has the shtick of bowling. And it, it sets its stall out pretty well with a fairly strong uh, reference to other bowling characters in other movies. Nothing too obvious, but they're certainly there if you're looking for them and they have a little bit of fun with it. But then we have two kids getting bullied, a Jewish kid and a young Afro-American lad. Um, and there is, over the course of two or three lines, an absolutely wonderful takedown of um, non-POC people who engage it with uh, Afro-Caribbean uh, entertainment in whatever form it might be, but are still racist at the same time and don't really see that as being as hypocritical as it is. And in these three lines, they manage to absolutely eviscerate that, draw attention to the fact that it's a problem, and also, while doing these things, just be very, very funny as well. That, I think, was when I fell in love with the comic book. The writing for these two kids and the bullies as well was exactly what I was expecting from it. We do then have to deal with the fact that we have an Andy Samberg author insert, um, and certain people might look at the uh, the way he's portrayed in this comic. I'm just going to refer to him as the Sandberg character, Sandberg character from now on. And he's got the uh, chiseled jawline and the still dark hair, even though he's in his 40s. Doesn't happen to everyone. Um, and the washboard abs. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, yeah, this is clearly him just wanting to up himself. Like, uh, Keanu Reeves can get away with that. He's actually an action star. But this is a guy who's in sitcoms. But if you haven't watched... Pop star never stopped never stopping. I, I would understand that uh, sentiment. But I have seen it, and I have seen how ripped this guy can be. It's one of the things I really like about Brooklyn Nine-Nine. His character often has jokes at his expense, the fact that he can't sing and is out of shape. I think those two things are very, very funny, because he clearly can sing. He's famous for it, and he's also pretty ripped. So having that as an author insert, it kind of works. It's kind of a knowing nod to what an insert would look like and taking the mickey out of it. Um, we also have a very nice take on the idea of... Uh, and this is a terrible thing in a lot of sitcoms and other fictional uh, humorous writing at the moment, is making uh, progressive uh, activists the butt of jokes. The worst, uh, most heinous example of this is in the sitcom I otherwise really, really enjoy, uh, Never Have I Ever, where the school teacher would go to extreme grammatical... Uh, 
just absolutely messing with sentences to refer to a non-binary person by the, with the they them pronouns, even though the sentence would work absolutely fine with no gender uh, usage whatsoever without using the words they and them. And it becomes the joke that people try uh, to try uh, are trying too hard that they are tryhards. In this one, we have the opportunity to do that, and we get closer at times, but we never get there. There's always like a, an edge to things. There's always like an excuse or a reason why people are what they are, and it isn't just that. And also, we when we meet uh, Sandberg's character's dad, um, and he is an older Jewish gentleman dying of cancer. There's room for boomer humor there. But they don't fall into that easy trap either. They still have him as being quite aware of what's going on in the world, and it is very much a thing that is aware of the world. It feels like it's a very appropriate time this kind of book to come out with the rise in anti-Semitism happening, I was going to say in America, but across the world. It's not like that's a localised thing. Um, and we are talking about the rise of racism and extremism. Uh, and it managed to do this. I'm talking about um, climate change and also bowling and vigilantism. And it's funny at the same time. Honestly, I was way more impressed than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a kind of a, a simple little look at how you put jokes together and uh, how you can use comedic art stylings to tell serious stories or do uh, superhero action. Turns out it's just a genuinely great Captain comic book and I've added it to my pull list. And yeah, I'm taking this cover. I didn't order it for me, but I'm having it. It looks fantastic and I can't, I'm really happy to have that in my collection. Uh, that's it for me though. Um, I've got at least a couple of links to review, so keep checking back on this channel. Uh, until then, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.